Sigma Tiger news all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Elon is a machine. Canadian Civil War and Boeing blunders. Stay tuned. <laughs> The triumphant return of the Sigma Tiger. I was on vacay for a couple weeks. Truly, the wife had me in the basement, in the salt mines, rearranging everything. Well, what the heck is going on? Big Daddy Elon, just pumping out all these kids. Well, he's a procreationist, absolutely. He believes that we should have as many kids as possible, and the world is underpopulated. And uh, he's doing his bit. He went ahead and had his third child with his Neuralink executive, Siobhan Zillis. Not third total, third with her, okay? So I think he has like eight children now. Yeah, it's his third child with her specifically. Quietly had another child with an executive at one of his companies. Neuralink's director of special projects, Siobhan Zillis, had another of Musk's children earlier this year, according to a Bloomberg report published Friday. It's his third child with Zillis. The billionaire quietly had twins with the Neuralink executive in 2021. Boom. According to the court documents that showed Musk filed a petition to change the twins' names to have their father's last name and contain their mother's last name as part of their middle names. Interesting. It's not clear how many children Musk has in total, but he has 11 living who are publicly known, five with his first wife, the author Justine Willis, three with the musician Grimes, and three with Zillis. I mean... This dude is a machine. He is just like having kids and having a laugh. He's definitely African, right? South African. Boom. AI is exhausting the power grid. Tech firms are seeking a miracle solution. Yeah. So all of this training of AI is taking a tremendous amount of power. Like 30,000 gigawatts. Like it's a tremendous amount of energy. So where are they getting it? from the power grid. Well, how do we get energy? Currently, we burn coal. That's exactly what we do. We burn coal and it creates steam, which spins a turbine, which goes into a generator, which creates electricity, and then we send it out the power lines. Boom, that's how it works. Well, there's other forms. Nuclear, where they'll take like uh, enriched uranium or plutonium and they'll put it in water and guess what? We get some steam and that steam spins a turbine. The turbine generates electricity. Did you see what's happening here? We have one form of gener generating electricity, and it's friction. And usually it's from boiling water. Well, nuclear, mini nuclear uh, fusion, right? That's the that's the that's what we're using. Nuclear fission is what we would like to have, but uh, currently we do not. All right, well, what's it say? Uh, so, near the river's banks in central Washington, Microsoft is betting on an effort to generate power from atomic fusion. Okay? The collision of atoms that powers the sun, a breakthrough that has eluded scientists for the past century. Physicists predict it will elude Microsoft too. Yeah. So, this is what they're working on. Sorry, I mixed it up before. We currently have fission, right? But we don't have fusion. So, basically, you put a little bit in and you get a tremendous amount of energy out. They're working on it in South Korea. They have, like, the... Uh, sun or whatever it's basically this container that they just super heat up anyway uh that's what microsoft's betting on but right now mini fusion reactors or fission reactors is currently what they're putting up all over the states they're testing these out nuclear it's the cleanest form even though chernobyl and fukushima that's it name another one three mile island boom that's it that's all of them so it is the cleanest greenest energy on the go so look forward to uh, more nuclear popping up and around, especially with AI. The data centers need a tremendous amount of power. <clears throat> White House promotes Biden official who compared police to slave patrols and wants to abolish ICE. Well, that's not good at all. Tyler Cherry is now serving as the Associate Communications Director at the White House. And this is not him. 
Now, a former Interior Department Communications Director of the Biden Administration has been hired in a new role and will be working on communications inside the Biden White House, despite sparking controversy last year over social media posts attacking police, criticizing Republicans, and supporting the anti-Israel movement. Yikes. Not, uh, not very becoming. After more than three years as an interior working for Secretary Deb Haaland, Cherry started last week as an Associate Communications Director at the White House. He sparked controversy after social media posts surfaced that he uh, blasted law enforcement and promoted Russiagate, which obviously we know is a hoax. Here's a picture of the individual living an ulterior lifestyle by the look of it with some rose petals uh, safety pinned onto a mesh belly top. Take from it what you will. Uh, this is what he wrote. Time to recall that the modern day police system is direct evolution of slave patrols and lynch mobs. Of course they are. It has nothing to do with tracking down criminals. Uh, cheersing in bars to ending the occupation of Palestine. No shame and F your glares. I do support Gaza, free Palestine. Yes, yeah, so this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Clearly, totally uh, right in the mind. He, maybe he is qualified for the job. I don't know. The Tea Party was never about debt deficit, but also racism, white grievance, politics. Anyway, whatever. So uh, Biden, you know, hitting home runs left, right, and center, batting a thousand as a president. Uh, go. His administration has hired on another person. You remember the person he hired on before of the ulterior lifestyle? He went up just stealing people's luggage, you know, several times. He's under investigation. He's been fired. Anyway, good luck to that guy. Uh, many more bacteria produce greenhouse gases than previously thought, study finds. Oh, really? Well, I thought it was just cow burps and cow farts and uh, human oil burning. Coal, fossil fuels, right? Anyway, well, guess what? Caltech researchers have discovered a new class of enzymes that enable a myriad of bacteria to breathe nitrate when in low oxygen conditions. While this is an evolutionary advantage for bacterial survival, the process produces the greenhouse gas nitrous oxide as a byproduct. Oh my god, the third most potent greenhouse gas after carbon dioxide and methane, or methane, whatever you want to call it. However, unlike carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide is not long lived in the atmosphere, meaning that any interventions to curb its emissions can have immediate benefits. For example, overuse of fertilizer for crops provides soil bacteria with abundant nitrate, which they convert into nitrous oxide. More judicious applications of fertilizer could both cut down on greenhouse gas emissions and save farmers money. There you go, boom, just throw some more NO on there. Uh, also, nitrous oxide is used for uh, oxygen production within your blood. People take NO, explode and just go to the gym and get those extra reps, those pumps, nitrous oxide. It's much more difficult, but with this research, we know that there are more sources producing nitrous oxide than previously thought. Mm-hmm, bacteria all over the gaff. So anyway, more alarming uh, discoveries about gases in the atmosphere. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? Just turn off the internet. That's probably what's gonna happen. Then you won't even know what's going on anymore. Mysterious deaths of two U.S. Border Patrol agents as one is found dead in vacation hotel room after prostitute tryst and the other kills himself days after the trip. What could be happening here? Let's dive right in. The deaths of two U.S. Border agents after their Colombian vacation is being investigated by the FBI. James Eduardo Cisnernos, 54, and Alejandra Ahmed, Alexander, sorry, <laughs> Traveled to Colombia together in late May. But before they returned home, Cisneros was found dead in the uh, Medellin Hotel after a tryst with a woman described locally as a prostitute. Ahmed then killed himself on American soil after returning home from the trip before FBI agents had the chance to interview him about his friend's death. Interesting. Cisneros' cause of death remains unknown. The woman he'd been seen with waving goodbye to him and leaving his room, according to local authorities. And there's the two individuals. U.S. investigators spent days in Medellin working with Colombian officials to piece together how he died. Officials discovered that his phone and other valuables were missing from the hotel where his body was found and clothes and suitcase were in total disarray. His wallet had also been emptied after his death. Ahmed returned to Texas alone but killed himself days after. Weird. I mean, strange. Did he murder him and now he's like, oh man, I'm done in. There's no way I'll get away with it. Or maybe he helped the other woman murder him and he was like, oh man, I'm totally done in. It sounds like he had something to do with this dude's death. His friend. His vacation partner. Both men were assigned to Clint Station just outside Texas's sixth largest city and were nearing retirement eligibility. I mean, what the heck? 
U.S. Customs Border Protection, the parent agency of the U.S. Border Patrol, did not immediately respond to a request for a comment by DailyMail.com. In December, the U.S. Embassy in Bogota issued travel alert after eight American men died in the span of two months under suspicious circumstances. To date, 28 tourists, including Americans, have died many in the year. Colombian authorities admitted. Yeah, so you might want to stay away from Colombia and the uh, procuring of prostitutes there, especially as an American. Doesn't seem to be working out too well. Lee Rivers. Medical school wokeness is threatening Canada's precarious Jenga Tower of Healthcare. Buckle up, patients. It's going to be a bumpy ride as a new cohort of doctors replaces the old. So what's happening here? The uh, College of uh, Physicians and Surgeons, that's like the governing body, come out with protocol and things that, like, you know, you have to do follow to become a doctor and while you're in there. And, of course, they set the... Uh, you know, parameters of a doctor. Like, you know what I mean? It seems like the uh, Hippocratic Oath is, is being removed. I don't even know if they say it in med school anymore. Anyway, Canadians horrified by Aaron Severian's account last month in the Washington Free Beacon disclosing shocking re revelations about the trainee doctor's incompetence at the University of California at Los Angeles, UCLA, should not lean away in ambivalence, nor imagine that Canada is by any stretch of the imagination immunized from the self-same malaise one that casts a grim shadow across our nation's healthcare horizon. Gotta love the verbiage used by the author here, just totally uh, scholarly whipping out these words. In that explosive report, which Sigma Tiger News did cover, whistleblowers spotlighted racially biased admissions at UCLA's medical school, coupled with ballooning uh, Luke and I, in junior doctor's general knowledge of medicine, I have students on their rotation who don't know anything was one of the standout comments from one professor in the UCLA Admissions Committee. When I read that a student incapable of locating a major artery berated their mentor, it came as no surprise whatsoever. But surprise or not, the realization that failure rates in routine medical competency examinations have skyrocketed up tenfold in some benchmark areas such as family medicine is far more emblematic of an impending crisis. Buckle up, patients, it's going to be a bumpy ride. So in Canada, our elected politicians are quick to point out that Canadian healthcare is the exclusive domain of the public sector, the enduring legacy of legendary national hero Tommy Douglas, and that government keeps a firm hand on the tiller, but trusting the politician class in these dangerous days is tantamount to masochistic derangement, so I wanted to uncover more. Recently, I spoke in depth with three well-placed professors teaching or administrating at leading Canadian medical schools. All three asked to remain anonymous for fear of retributive repercussions routinely inflicted by the university's wonderful alliteration there. Um, personal departments, and in this article go by they, them pronouns, taken individually, their stories might be interpreted as anecdotal curiosities, unconnected tales of woe from disgruntled teachers. Man, this person is just going for it. The first of the trio is self-declared but now sheepishly repentant advocate for social medicine initiatives aimed at improving this is just too hard to read people need to understand that most people reading these articles aren't interested in your fancy words and like trying to dissect what you're trying to say just lay it out there the photographer's going to do it right now kids in the schools are being taught a whole bunch of different ideologies as opposed to medicine treating the patient okay like medicine is all jacked up and the healthcare is all jacked up because doctors know nothing about diet and nutrition i mean the number one thing of how to cure the body is what you're putting into it fasting used to be something stop putting things in your body so your body has a chance to repair no 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 keep eating your ultra processed foods don't worry about it just pop these little petroleum based pills and you'll be fine they alter chemicals. They might make you suicidal, but you can still eat your ice cream. Anyway, here's the deal. Eat better food, exercise, go outside more. Stay off your phone. Reduce the amount of garbage. Like, you're a human. You know what's good and bad. You're not stupid. Like, you should be able to figure it out. If someone gave you a list of things and asked you to put good on one side, bad on the other, you should be able to get a generally high score on that. You know, like... Rat poison. Apple. Where are they going? Like, it's pretty simple. You know, going outside. Would you put that on the negative list? Yeah, maybe if there's a tornado or an earthquake or something stupid like that. But generally, it's a good idea. Eating candy. Is that a good idea? No. Treating yourself with candy. Is that a good idea? Sure. Why not? Treat. Once in a while. All right. 
So doctors are woke. Everybody's woke. That's the problem. They're going through university. Like, look at this free Palestine. Queers for Palestine. None of it makes any sense. Pro ra ra Hamas. Let's go. Is Canada preparing for a U.S. civil war? Well, this is Snopes, the ultimate uh, line in um, truth, fact-checking. Well, what do they say? Social media posts in June 2024 accurately stated that Canada was preparing for a second U.S. civil war. What? Mixture of true and false. Well, what's true? The Canadian government did publish a report saying that the country needed to be prepared for a potential civil war in the U.S., yeah, well, they're trying to fear-monger you and thinking that if Trump gets elected, the whole country's going to fall apart. What's left of it? What's false? However, the document did not say any preparations were underway. It also describes such an event as under-anticipated and listed alongside seven other under-anticipated disruptions and ten more probable prominent disruptions. Yeah, there's going to be an election in the U.S. And guess what? It's very polarizing. There's never been a greater divide between uh, conservative and liberal viewpoints. The centrist, like, doesn't exist. It's like extreme left and right. There is an extreme right, but the left is way more extreme, it seems. At least in the sphere of media, what they're showing you. Earliest biological signals of autism found in mini brains experiment. Well, some people with autism spectrum disorder experience milder symptoms, but others with more profound cases face significant challenges with social, language, and cognitive skills. Sometimes lifelong supportive care is needed. A new study of mini brains developed in the lab gives crucial insight into the biological foundations behind this puzzling disparity in autism, which could help us better understand and manage that diverse neurological condition. The differences in the embryonic origins of these two subtypes of autism urgently need to be understood, says neuroscientist Eric Korshesnin from the University of California, San Diego. That understanding can only come from studies like ours, which reveal the underlying neurobiological causes of their social challenges and when they begin. So here we are at one month looking at something, and at two months looking at something. Means nothing to us. Looks like a Dalmatian's dots. This research carried out by an international team of scientists involved the use of induced pluripotent stem cells, IPSCSs which can be reprogrammed into any kind of cell safely taken from the blood of 10 toddlers with autism and six controls without the condition. The IPSCs were grown into brain cortical organoids, or BCOs, which are simplified 3D models of brain structures. Scientists use these organoids to study what's going on in the body in place of live organs. It gives us an idea of what's going on. It's like why we study mice instead of humans. Well, mice's organs and uh, how their system works is very similar to humans and their lifespan is a lot shorter so if you introduce something into their environment and they develop cancer well then we can extrapolate that information and apply it to humans be like oh well they got it in seven weeks a human will get it in seven years whatever crucial findings of the study was that the mini brains using ipscs from autistic kids grew to be around 40 percent larger compared with neurotypical controls so these things what they're called the induced pluripotent stem cells grew larger in kids with autism. So what does that mean? We found the larger embryonic BCO size, the more severe the child's later autism social symptoms. So if they had a larger BCO size, the child had greater social symptoms of autism. Interesting. So at some point, what this is trying to say is that they'll have a test where you can take in your uh, child and maybe even in utero have a test done to verify if your child has these black dots and how big they are. And then you can be like, oh no, my kid's going to have autism. How bad is it going to be? And they'll work on ways of preventing it. Can we add something in that prevents these black dots from growing? Maybe. Likely in the future. Well, guess what? We covered this before. Uh, Ultra-processed foods tied to higher risk of early death study finds. The American government came out and authored a study saying it's not that bad. It's fine. You can eat it. Well, what do you want to avoid? I think it's pretty obvious what you want to avoid. Uh, Ultra-processed foods, there are distinct findings. For example, meat, poultry, and seafood-based ready-to-eat products showed a strong association with mortality. There you go. So if you're eating processed meats okay talking about 
sausages, deli meats, ham, okay? These sliced, loose meats, Arby's, not looking good for you. And then, like, I guess, like, processed crab meat that's made out of Pollock. Stuff like this, not good. Also, we saw some association for sugar-sweetened beverage and artificially sweetened beverages with higher mortality, meaning that if you're eating things with added sugar, chances are you're going to have some problems. Or if you're eating things with aspartame or sucralose, higher mortality, meaning people who have been consuming that are dying at greater rates. So what would the tiger advise? Stop eating things that come in boxes and bags. Try, I, yeah, I know. How difficult is that? Like, can you imagine having to turn on your own stove or oven? Cook something yourself? Good Lord. Well, uh, yeah, so they're saying that more people are eating it. Even higher income people are eating this trash because it's, it's there. You go to the shelf. You know, like, if you go to a grocery store around the edge of the grocery store, that's typically where the fresh stuff is. The produce on one side, you might have the frozen on the other, meats in the back right? It's typically how it works, meats and dairy. And then in the middle, all of the aisles will contain all the packaged products, the ultra-processed foods. Heart and stroke, what's happening? Arteries are being clogged, okay? The body can't process this stuff. I mean, it doesn't know what to do with it. Anyway, check out a recipe book. It's not that hard. Some things are labor-intensive, like making bread. But you don't have to make bread. You can get unleavened bread buy it already frozen in the uh, frozen food section. Just throw it in the frying pan. Boom. Alright, NASA calls off spacewalk as last minute, at last minute sorry, as astronaut suit malfunctions. Yeah, big surprise. Maybe Boeing uh, <laughs> developed these suits as well. Two U.S. astronauts abandoned plans to exit the International Space Station to conduct maintenance on Monday due to a space suit malfunction. NASA officials called off spacewalk because of a water leak in the cooling unit of one of the astronaut spacesuits. Yeah. You wouldn't want to get out there and just totally get too hot and sweat. The leak which affected the suit donned by NASA astronauts Tracy Dyson sprang up just after the suits were transferred to battery power just before they exited the space station. The cooling unit on the spacesuits are designed to keep the wearers at a comfortable temperature while carrying out their work. Dyson and her crewmate Mike Barrett were set to remove a faulty electronics box from the communications antenna on the space station's exterior. Perhaps they are going to work on something for the Boeing there and their helium links because they can't get off the uh, space station either. Astronauts stuck in the International Space Station as engineers race to save them. Yeah, so they had a hard enough time trying to get off of planet Earth and get up to the space station. Well, guess what? They had a problem docking. And now they're docked. And guess what? They can't even get out of there. So, like, this is a nightmare that's been, you know, for, uh, you know, foreseen by me. I, I, I feel for these people. I, I, like, honestly, deep down inside of me, I feel like they're not coming home. I feel like this is the end for them. But we'll see. Can they pull it together? Experts are rushing to save astronauts stuck in the International Space Station after multiple problems. I mean, they cannot return to Earth. Over the years, the ISS, which orbits the Earth every 90 minutes, has hosted astronauts from around the world. But for two American NASA astronauts who traveled to the ISS on the 5th of June, over a month ago, only supposed to be there two weeks, well, guess what? Their journey back to Earth has been delayed for a third time due to several issues with the spacecraft. Astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams are currently waiting on board the ISS while the return module of the Boeing Starliner remains docked to the Harmony module. Engineers are believed to have had a 45-day window in which to bring the astronauts home due to Harmony having limited fuel. Yee, so we got about two weeks left for these astronauts. They were due to be back or leave to come back on the 13th of June, following a week, according to CNN. There are a series of helium leaks and issues with five of the Starliner's thrusters that stopped working during the journey. Yikes. Some have pointed out that the latest in a long line of issues that Boeing has had with its technology after whistleblower John Baird allegedly safety problems with its air aircraft. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if that's the guy, but he killed himself. And then, like, another guy was whistleblowing as well. And he died of some weird infection. Boeing 737 MAX dives 2,000 feet in 17 seconds on Ryanair flight to London. So I coined a phrase there uh, two weeks ago. And it was... Uh, if it's Boeing, I'm not going. Not going on Boeing. Hashtag not going on Boeing. Hashtag this, people. Ryanair flight pummeled 
pummeled, plummeted more than 2,000 feet at a high speed in just 17 seconds as it came into land, an investigation has found. It's in the final stages of descent into London's Stansted Airport when it suddenly plunged. Said the sharp downward dive was a case of an unstable approach, and pilots were forced to circle around again before landing successfully the second time. But the accident, watchdogs declared a serious incident carrying out its investigation. So yeah, what's going on? Well, uh, a similar thing happened in Korea. Anxiety-inducing video shows Korean air flight drop over 26,000 feet due to a plane defect. Okay? Not going on a Boeing. Korean air flight bound for Taiwan over the weekend had to turn back and make an emergency landing due to a plane defect. Flight KE-189 and Boeing 737 MAX running uh, issue here. This was the airplane a few years ago that they had to stop using ground all 737s because there was a problem. And well, they've continued. Doors flying off, tires exploding. Well, this one departed Incheon International only to detect a problem with its pressurization system 50 minutes into the flight. The pressurization system is responsible for regulating the internal pressure on airplanes. Yeah, that goes, you all just pass out. The masks will drop, boom. Get it on before you pass out. Around 40 minutes after the flight took off, the plane made a sharp descent, plummeting over 22,000 feet in 7 minutes, and another 4,500 feet in about 6 minutes before it stabilized. I mean, it's terrifying. South Korea's land, uh, land Infrastructure and Transport Ministry said that about 125 passengers on board, 15 suffered eardrum pain and hyperventilation during the drop. 13 were hospitalized. There is a video. Let's check it out. Whatever. I don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, moving right along. Okay. Well, here's another one. This one here over Oklahoma. Passengers on board Southwest Boeing 737, which plunged 500 feet within Oklahoma neighborhood. Sharing terrifying footage from inside the airplane. Yeah, there you go. Another one. If it's Boeing, I'm not going. That's the deal. And here is uh, Babylon B, their satirical website, and uh, they put together a little something here for Boeing. Check it out. Hi, I'm Bob Boeing, founder of Boeing. You know, flying can be a stressful experience for people of all ages. Here at Boeing, we know you feel safest when you're flying on a plane made by a company that above all else prioritizes diversity. Sorry, Steve. Welcome aboard, black woman Steve. <laughs> I don't have to use this, right? You do know I'm just an actor. <laughs> Classic black woman Steve. As you're flying through the air at 30,000 feet in a pressurized metal tube being propelled by highly explosive jet fuel, you can rest easy knowing that you're in a Boeing. And at Boeing, we have stringent standards making sure to hire our airplane technicians based on the single most important factor, what they like to do in the bedroom. Now we institute regular surprise certification checks to make sure everyone is qualified. Show of hands, who's gay? I am. I am. I'm a Methodist. <laughs> Close enough. We know when you board an airplane, your first question is, who's the pilot? Well, there's no need to worry your pretty little head about that when you're on a boat. Our new oppression detection technology scans the pilots to make sure they're part of a marginalized group, like women, Pacific Islanders, or even the blind. All right. Access granted. All right, so you guys can see that's a little bit of a piss take. It's pretty funny. Let's go right along here. Uh, illegal migrants lured Jocelyn Nungare 12 underbridge assaulted her for two hours before killing her. So just so you know, the migrants haven't quit. They're still committing tons of crimes and absolutely the worst kind ever. Uh, pretty sure these individuals are demonized uh, to do something like that. Like, can you imagine uh, 
it's insane. So the illegal Venezuelan migrants accused of murdering a 12-year-old Houston girl lured her under a bridge where they stripped her naked to the waist and assaulted her for two hours, disturbing new court documents alleged Franklin Jose Pena Ramos, 26, and Johan Jose Orangal Martinez, 21, allegedly bound Jocelyn and Gray's hands behind her back during the brutal assault and strangled her and dumped her body in a bayou. Just so you know that these illegal immigrants, not all of them, but a lot of them are dirty, rotten criminals. And crimes down in Venezuela. Prisons uh, are empty. Where'd they go? Part of the deal was send them to America and we'll let you out. If you leave and go to America, we'll let you out of prison. It's fact. And one thing about the Boeing dude, he makes like $30 million a year. Sigma Tiger, I'll open your grill with that hot, juicy beef. We're back. We might have a new format. We might have a new studio coming in. I've been working on some things. Sigma Tiger, signing out.